Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial playthrough. In the last couple episodes, we took our first steps in the evac shelter. We secured a weapon, we learned how to look at our inventory, what our inventory is uh, storage is based on, and things like that. Now, before we begin, I want to say that I'm going to start breaking these down into much smaller episodes for a period of time. There are two main reasons for this. Number one, currently I've had some stuff going on in real life that has slowed down my ability to record and so shorter videos allow me to have more of a backlog so that's really just for me and then for the second reason is because I noticed the last couple episodes have been mostly like ah let's just move around and grab some stuff and that's not very good for tutorial content because people generally search for specific things so instead I would like each episode to be a small portion of what we're doing a small tutorial object like oh today we're going to learn how to drop objects and all the different ways to drop objects and then make that the entire video so that it is better for search reasons and that benefits both me as the youtuber and you as the person searching for whatever is going on so i just wanted to put that out there so uh the other thing i want to mention that i forgot to mention previously is that there are three variants of the evac shelter and so we are currently in the best variant which is like the it's clean there's lots of supplies here that's uh mostly what we're looking for there is a middle ground variant where a lot of things have been looted and so it has very few supplies and then there's a third variant where it is dilapidated and graffitied so depending on which one you actually begin the game in you will have more or fewer supplies depending on which one you spawn in so we got pretty lucky there's usually i mean i don't, actually i don't know if this is the best variant if we take a look around it very well may be the highest quality variant it may be the middle variant i never ever play in the evac shelter so i'm not a hundred percent but anyway so we learned uh, about taking our first steps we talked to our npc companion we secured a weapon to hold it is not a good weapon but it is what we have available to us at the moment and like I said, uh, regardless of your starting scenario, you're almost always going to do the same things. You're going to secure shelter, a weapon, food and drink, right? Those are the day one priorities that I, I look at pretty much immediately. I, as a more advanced player, often am checking the map to see where is most optimal for us to set up our base. But for you, especially if you're starting an evac shelter and it's one of your first playthroughs, just live in the evac shelter for a short period of time unless it's like isolated where you would have to walk for many many tiles just to get to town you know say our uh, evac shelter was located here there's really nothing <laughs> nearby and we would have to walk for miles then you would want to choose a different location for your base but we're close enough to a town that that is fine so we've secured shelter We've secured a weapon, although we will look to improve that in the future. But for right now, because we're in a relatively safe place, we're going to do what you should do in basically every survival situation, uh, real life or video game life, and that is take stock of what we have available to us. So we're going to go through the shelter. We're going to pick up all the stuff that has value, and we're going to basically throw it in a big pile so that we can look at it all together, and we can decide what our next priority should be. Because if we, I mean, really, that's that's what it comes down to. You evaluate how many calories do I have? You know, what kind of food and drink do I have? What needs to be, oh, we have all this food but no drinks? Okay, well, our priority has now shifted to where we need to secure beverages uh, in order to survive. So, we have a weapon in our hands, so we could fight one or two zombies in a pinch. Uh, and we're just going to look through the shelter, and we're going to compile everything into one pile for assessment. So we will search these lockers. Now, again, because we have a very small storage, we only can carry about four liters worth of stuff. This is going to be a little tedious. There's nothing we can do at the moment to address our storage issues. We could try to coerce our NPC into giving us something, but we, we don't have the benefit of that. What we could do is if we look at the emergency jacket and see if that contains any storage. In fact, it does. So we could, and we're looking for this line right here, storage. You'll see we talked about this before. This gives an additional half a liter of storage. So what we could do is wear this extra jacket so that we can carry another half liter of, of items. We'll take a quick look around. I don't think there's anything else. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit the capital W key, which will bring up the where menu. And you'll see it pulls things from nearby. Each um, 
of these entries is based on its location. So here it says one, a locker to our south has an emergency jacket we could wear and the locker to our southeast, that would be down and to the right, we can wear that as well. Now you'll see it's not displaying the one we saw on the left hand side. That's because we've stepped away and remember you can only see containers contents when you're actually adjacent to them. So it's not displaying this locker's jacket, but if we step over there, you'll see it now displays the locker to our south, but not these two lockers. So we're gonna go ahead and wear this jacket just for that little extra bit of storage. Um, there are reasons we're not gonna wanna wear this jacket that we're gonna take this off before we get into combat, but for now, we're just using it so we can pick up a little bit more stuff. So basically, we're gonna pick up everything. And remember, the way I do this, uh, you can use the G key, um, and it will prompt you immediately, or you can use the E, the lowercase E key, to examine a specific tile. And then we toggle left and right on the uh, arrow keys to determine whether we're picking this up. Alternatively, you can press the corresponding letter. You'll see if I press B, it will pop up and highlight these both. Now you'll see here we have actually two items. If we only wanted to pick one up, we would press one and then toggle that item. And you'll see it now replaces that plus sign with a hash symbol. And the pound sign represents that we're using a specific number here. We're not picking up all items. That is what the plus represents, but we're actually only picking up one. So anytime you want to pick up a specific number of items, just type the number. You know, let's say we have 300 nails and we only want 150. We would type 150 and then we would toggle the same way we would if we were picking those items up. So now we want to pick everything up. So we're just going to grab everything here. Not the scrap. We don't really need that and we're gonna make piles. And you'll see very quickly as I was going through this list, we now have exceeded our pickup volume. So if I hit enter to pick them up, it will prompt me. It'll say, hey, basically you can't pick all this stuff up. Uh, we're, it's gonna pick up as much as possible and then it's gonna prompt us to wield that item because we don't have space for it. And we're gonna hit escape to ignore that. And you'll see it still picked up most of those items and it just canceled the things that were too too much for our inventory. So let's just start making a pile here. And we can quickly drop things from our inventory. So there are uh, three ways, three main ways to drop items in Cataclysm. If you press D, lowercase d, oh, my caps lock. Why is this multi drop? Ah, yeah, okay. So if we press a lowercase d, it will bring up this menu and we can toggle items the same way that we were toggling them. In our inventory, we can drop them using uh, just by using left or right or by pressing the corresponding number. Alternatively, we can press, I'm sorry, the corresponding letter. Um, so we could do it that way. Alternatively, if we have a whole category, you'll see everything is broken down into category. Here are tools, clothing, food. If we wanna drop an entire category, we can press tab, which will open this here, which is category selection mode. And as I hover, you'll see it highlights the entire category. So we can just drop everything quickly that way. That's probably the easiest way to do that. Uh, there are other ways to drop items, however. So let me pick up some more stuff. We can also try to pick everything up in this menu just by hitting the comma key, but I tend to manually do each one. So we'll ignore again, we'll come back over here. The other way to drop things is to use the capital D menu. And what the capital D menu allows you to do is specifically pick a tile to drop items on. So here it's prompting us. I'm gonna press left to represent that I wanna drop on this tile. And then it will open the same menu as before and we can quickly drop all of those things. So we're just gonna gather things up here. We don't need most of this stuff, but we're gonna pick it up anyway. Quite a lot of things here. 22 wrappers of protein rations, quite a lot of food. The third way you can drop things is using advanced inventory. This is something we will cover more in depth later, but here is what that looks like. And I will quickly um, do this so that we can uh, do it this way. And we'll drop all of these things. And we'll talk more about this menu as we go, but I wanted to show you it because it is another way you can drop items in the game. So we're just gonna continue picking up basically everything in this, um, in this area and we're gonna drop everything together. In fact, I'm going to do this quickly using advanced inventory and just uh, carrying everything over there. 
We'll talk more about hauling and advanced inventory in the future. For now, this is just to expedite the process. Actually, not as much as I thought. A lot of food, but we'll haul everything to this pile. Now, the benefit, uh, as you get better at the game, you will learn what you do and don't need. So, uh, you know, going through these cabinets, you don't need to pick everything up. You can just maintain a tally in your mind. But for now, you know, I wanted to put everything in one big pile. Now, there are a lot of ways that we, well, we're going to examine this pile now using the lowercase e key. And we're going to get a look at what we have. So we have the cell phone that we started with. We have an electric lantern which produces light. Uh, in Cataclysm, you need light to do a lot of things like craft items. So that is pretty good to have. Flashlights do the same thing. The problem with both of these items is that they do not have a battery inside of them. You'll see that the cell phone has a parent uh, parentheses value. This is the current battery charge and this is the maximum battery charge. So our cell phone has a battery in it. And if we look here, you'll see it says it's a light battery that is high capacity. If we go down to the electric lantern, you'll see it does not have any number values in parentheses, and that means there's no battery currently loaded in it. But if we look here, it will tell you which batteries it can use. So here we could take the light battery out of our cell phone and place it into the lantern, which would uh, give us more value because cell phones generally are not very useful, but having a source of light can be. Flashlights also use light batteries. We have folded emergency blankets. These are of limited use. Uh, fire extinguishers, which extinguish fire, unsurprisingly. We have a matchbook, which is good because it will allow us to start fires, which is a, a very important thing to find in the early game. We have a pocket knife, which allows us to cut things, which is very valuable. We have a radio. We have emergency jackets, clean water, four bottles of clean water, 49 paper wrappers of protein rations, two first aid kits, uh, FEMA evacuation pamphlets, plastic bowls, knives, spoons, and three disposable light batteries. Okay, so we have batteries enough for our electric lantern and or flashlights as necessary. We have a fire source, a knife. Mm, first aid kits are also very, very good. If you find one of these in your emergency, emergency shelter, it takes care of some of your needs that we'll be talking about in the future. And then additionally, we have food and drink, which are, are very important as well. So let's talk. Well, I said I would break them down into individual episodes. Well, we haven't looked downstairs. So let's let's go downstairs and see if there are additional supplies in the basement. Now, we do have a weapon. And when I started playing Cataclysm, there could be zombies that would spawn in the basement. I'm pretty sure that we removed that a long time ago. But just in case, it's good to go down with a weapon just in case you find yourself in conflict. Okay, so we have a series of doors here. Now we've talked about moving around in the game previously. We haven't really talked about doors and things or stairs. In fact, I should tell you about that. So when you wanna travel up or down stairs, it is the same keys that they are in most roguelikes. That would be the greater than and less than symbol, also known as the angled brackets. They're located on the period and comma keys on the average QWERTY keyboard. So to go downstairs, we use the greater than symbol, which is the one that hooks uh, in this direction. It's this, this shape, this side carrot. Okay. So we will press that button to go down the stairs and to come upstairs, we press less than, which is of course the one that angles this direction. So we can go back upstairs. So, and of course, traveling up and down stairs costs you time uh, and whatnot. So you'll see time is passing as we toggle. Anyway, we haven't talked about doors. Uh, to open a door, you can just walk into a door. If it's locked, it will tell you that it's locked, I believe, when you try to walk into it. If not, you can try using the E key to examine the doorway. And then if we want to close the door, we press the C key, lowercase c, and it will prompt us where, uh, well, it depends if you're using auto-targeting and it's the only object nearby, it will automatically close the door. If you're like me and you have muscle memory, it will bring up a prompt uh, saying, hey, how do you how do you close this? And again, that's an option I turned off earlier. Oh, I don't remember where it was. It's it's in here somewhere. It says, you know, uh, auto select if single if it's only one target. So you can toggle that if that's something you're interested in. I don't know where it's at. Anyway, we found a small bathroom and we found uh, in the sink here, we found a first aid kit, another pamphlet, a jug of ammonia, which is full. Uh, anytime you see this 30 out of 30, basically what this means is that this particular container 
which is a gallon plastic jug, which it should say uh, somewhere. It does not. Oh, gallon jug, of course. Uh, so a gallon jug of ammonia uh, for ammonia. This could hold 30 charges of ammonia, and it currently has 30 charges of ammonia. We also found some soap and some paper. I'm actually not going to pick up the paper. There is value in it, but I'm not going to take it because I know that it's not super important. Yet another first aid kit. Okay, so we're going to have to make a trip back upstairs. North and below you hear whack. That sounds like our NPC companion. North, oh, north and below. Ah, I see. Okay, well, let's look at our map. Yeah, so we're hearing sounds from um, the prison. The prison is a multi-floor building. And so even though we were downstairs, there must have been a subsequent lower floor because we got a message saying from the north and below. So we're hearing sounds from all the way all the way over here we're hearing sounds at a floor beneath us so we know that this goes at least three floors deep so that's not something to be concerned about so we'll head back upstairs and we'll drop this stuff that we picked up just to get it out of our inventory so we can pick up some more stuff so we're going to come back because these first aid kits have a lot of value so we're going to grab uh, we'll grab the scrub brush no we don't have inventory that's okay now, the other important thing about finding this uh, toilets, these toilets, is that we can use them as a water source. If we examine the toilet, it will bring up a menu and it will say that there's 24 charges of water in the toilet. Now, you can drink toilet water. I would not recommend it. It will make you sick and give you food poisoning, which can be very bad. Uh, we can additionally, because it's not frozen, we can pour it into a different container uh, or we can dump the water out of the toilet. This is important. Uh, we need to boil this water for it to be safe, but we just found 24 portions of water uh, and you'll see there are two toilets. So we just found 48 portions of water, which is what, 12 times the supply we already had. We currently only have eight portions of water because we have four bottles and each bottle contains two charges of water. And you'll see that this one specifically says clean water, whereas examining the toilet says just water which is how you know that it's not potable water. So let's continue checking about another uh, bunch of stuff here. We'll go ahead and grab all that and two more toilets. So we found plenty of water uh, that we will be able to work with in the future. We've also found two gallon jugs, which is pretty valuable. And uh, let's continue searching about. So we enter a small cluster here. Looks like this stuff was probably supposed to spawn on the benches, but was slightly out of alignment that's okay or maybe it is intended to spot on the floor i don't know we'll grab some of this stuff here okay so now we've fully searched the shelter we've compiled our stuff into one area where we can look at it all you'll see i have a broken tile here that will happen occasionally that just means that there is an object that is new ish and has not yet been given a tile in your tile set so don't fret over that too, too much. So we have quite a lot of stuff. Uh, and because I am a good, you know, someone who plays a lot, I'm familiar with what the most valuable items are. And I'm telling you that the first aid kits on day one, uh, especially for a new player, are very, very valuable. It will allow you to take more risks in the future because we now have medical supplies to treat ourselves with. But we'll get to that when we get there. So, yeah. Basically the same stuff we've already we already knew about fire starting knife water food and medical supplies. Okay, so we have a good healthy supply at this point. This door uh, is locked. There you'll see when I try to move into it, it gives me a message saying that it's locked. There are ways to get in there. We'll talk about that in the future. But for now, uh, we're just going to leave that alone. I know that that leads to our roof, which is not a super important thing at the moment. So now we know that we have food, we have drink, we have a prop, a shelter where we can be in relative safety. We have a weapon in our hands. I think in the next episode, we will talk about food and drink and the values that are important in that regard. Um, but for now, I think that's going to be a wrap on this episode. In the next couple episodes, we'll talk about food and drink and we'll probably talk about securing a better weapon, which will involve us using the crafting menu. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more of this tutorial content in the near future, and I'll see you next time.